Nothing lasts forever except our friendship. The event also has to end, but before the ending of the event, we need to hear the summary. And we have um, this session designed just for that reason. And to start the repertoire session, may I please invite the chairperson of this, um, this section. May I please invite Associate Professor Dr. Thapani Tameta uh, on stage as a chairperson, please. Thank you. Good afternoon again. Wow, so crowded in this meeting room for the last session. I'm so happy that everyone who love each other stay in this meeting room. So that for the, la the final session, uh, I think that for t our today conference, uh, Asia Pacific MOOC submit should be complete that we should to, like uh, summarize our idea our, from the our presenter for four topic. This is <coughs> a good opportunity for today that we 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 have a four rep reporter. I would like to invite four reporter. The first one, Assistant Professor Dr. Pravinya Suwanata Short. Dr. Bavinya from Chulalongkorn University. She will report from the program course level section. The second people I would like to invite Professor Dr. Kodama Yashuchi to the state. Professor Kodama, he is the professor from Hosei University, Japan. The third people I would like to invite uh, Seo Yang Lee from National Institute of Lifelong Education, Republic of Korea. Okay. And last one, I would like to invite Wesley Robert Tesler from UNESCO Bangkok. <laughs> so that for the time past weekly, I understand well, everyone so tired for today's conference, also of us too. So that it is possible that the reporter for of you could you please like uh, summarize in the chart as you can present. <laughs> I cannot limit the time. Is it possible? Yes. Not more than five minutes is okay. <laughs> okay. Longer. Longer up to <laughs> reporter. The first start I think that for our sequence of the topic is possible. Dr. Yes. Pravinya, could you please start for the first people and then go to the second and third and fourth? Okay. Thank you. Slide, please. Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this two days is really um, delighting conference, and I think. Uh, for yesterday, from the uh, the professor that come from the subject and program level of MOOC, uh, they got uh, many uh, significant you know factors that to to share with us. So I'll summarize some uh, of the four factors that they said and they mentioned. So the first um, uh, keynote speaker that uh, we uh, 
got uh, from the about the subject and program level is uh, Professor Pong, and uh, for our present presentation and discussion on the subject and program level is uh, Professor Warina, Professor uh, uh, Lao Sang, and Professor Nam, and Professor Yamada. From four professors, all four factors found, and then I'm just the first things I'm we we're talking about the the move in the context first. First, the regional level, country level, and institution level. But uh, all the cost, the most cost that for presenters say it is about like an online course. They, when when they implemented this online course, some uh, implemented as a blended, uh, blended course or uh, flipping flip learning, and some kind of like a supplementary uh, in the main course in the campus, and four course. Um, for the Professor Yamada, the, he mentions about the massive, I mean the <laughs> acronym, but I um, should share with you that online but blended approach is acceptable. This is what we, we found a lot in the many countries and also with the four professors that use it, right? But um, with the four major factors that every, everyone uh, mentioned is about like uh, content, pedagogy, and learning media, and assessment, and evaluation. For the first content, uh, we, found, we, we heard about the Hanok course. So this is some kind of cultural, right? And from the uh, Northern Thai food, from the Thai, I mean, Chiang Mai University. For the, so the content, if the content is about like a cultural and a bit um, interesting for the people to continue their life or more, get more value about the, the, their li living life. So maybe the MOOC will be uh, more valuable to attract the people to come. And for the pedagogy, everyone setting about the video lectures, still the same, that we're talking about the short, very short uh, video lectures, five to 10 minutes, or not more than like a, maybe a bike side uh, video short. And a, uh, we use a pedagogy, some kind of question and answer quizzes, and a pretest, post-test thing like that. And for the more, more one thing I found from the uh, one professor, they use uh, online collaborative learning. And then we move to learning media. So various, various formats found. I mean, um, more than vi only video, PDF content, uh, presentation PowerPoint, or some kind of download things that worksheet that they use. And for assessment and evaluation, actually this part from uh, discussion part. So we got um, effective methods for uh, evaluation. So Professor Iris used uh, peer assessment in her, in her class and pre and post test for the uh, guarantee the, uh, the successful learner, right? And we use uh, learning analytics this is come from uh, Professor, Professor Pong. Professor Pong show us about the uh, uh, with MOOC, and with MOOC is visualization tools uh, plug in in the X uh, platform. So after we use that, maybe in the near future we can you know categorize characteristics of the stu uh, le top students, what they do uh, during the the courses. So uh, with MOOC plug in, maybe uh, the new f uh, near future that uh, after he open to the public, you know, and uh, for the effective methods to evaluate learning outcome in the MOOC, this is uh, highlighted in the blue words as a peer assessment, peer review system, and personal achievement records, pre and post test reflections and rubrics. Also uh, with the question and answer, this all from the four professors that used in the class. Yeah, this is some kind of uh, when we implemented the 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 MOOC. So professor who uh, build up the the MOOC content should uh, think more about the assessment. Yeah. So, and a future direction of, from the our uh, I mean the cost section, cost program and level is uh, is about like more integration of MOOC, you know, in the main campus or more integration in various area in the like like a uh, labor. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and expansion of MOOC courses more in the campus or in the some area like uh, to improve more lifelong learners. And the last thing is implementing it. It it mean MOOC in the systematic way of the flipping learning because some kind we I I heard that uh, Dr. Sonom Pon said that 
he she did uh, flip learning but not systematic yet so she will try to make it more systematic model yeah this is all that from the course and program level thank you very much All right, uh, I am so grateful for the, having a reporter uh, of uh, platform and portal level session. I am originally an uh, engineer for the uh, IT company, so just transferred to the professor. So it's, it's very interesting for us to present uh, like this uh, platform and portal uh, system. So I will pre briefly introduce a uh, summary of uh, reflect uh, their presentation. Then we have uh, nine presentation from the Philippines and Malaysia and Korea and Thailand. After that, we have uh, five presentation from Japan, which uh, is Jemuk person. Uh, we uh, in JMOOCs uh, have a uh, four portal by uh, non-national and uh, private company, and uh, just first of all introduce uh, some uh, portal point and GACCO and FISTAM and the OUZ platform and the net running in platforms. So I will present uh, briefly uh, the this presentation. So as you know, the yesterday, uh, the presentation right is a little bit broken. So I'm a little bit confusing. For <laughs> uh, Maybe it's not good to the present. So I just uh, totally putting to the item was the presentation. First of all, uh, from Philippines, the title is Asia MOOC Portal and the model and the governance and the sustainability and plans and challenges. He's, uh, she said uh, towards the pedagogical MOOCs made by uh, Philippines MOOC, uh, P MOOCs. So they, uh, she just setting up to the Asian MOOC portal offered by a member of an institution by Asian Association of Universities, coordinated by a steering committee Hong Kong and uh, Indonesia and uh, India and Japan and Malaysia. So the philosophy is gateway to knowledge and uh, open access. Launched on uh, 26 October 2016, Malaysia, uh, Manila. Then she just explained the transfer credit and the sustainability and the challenges. After that, uh, from Malaysia, the title is Overview of uh, MOOC uh, Development and Implementation. That she uh, setting up to the, in uh, 2015, uh, Globalized Open Line of Malaysian Education Blueprint for Higher Education. That she explained the focus. And uh, Malaysia MOOC, setting up to launch on the 2016 and the number of MOOCs currently uh, 219. Total en enrollment is uh, 161,000 persons. And uh, she explained uh, Malaysia MOOCs framework from input to output. And, uh, coordinated by a uh, national learning Cons council and the collaboration between the two 20 public institu institutions. Then there is uh, three categories, uh, common courses, niche courses, and lifelong courses. The, from pedagogy, uh, fundamental shift in education from uh, MOOCs 1.0 to open learning then she explained the student-centered learning and uh, this just introduced the discussion board and the uh, learning activities and other topics. 
from Korea. The title is Came Platform Present and Future. The, he explained the uh, KMOOC system based on the OpenEdX platform. Then in 1916, upgrading platform and uh, explaining uh, system architecture and uh, KMOOC services. This means uh, based on the OpenEdX upper, in the upper side in the modification and uh, development plus uh, interworking. Then just introduced uh, mobile apps using OpenEdX mobile apps. Then currently over a uh, thousand count and the uh, number of users is over a thousand. In mobile apps, then including the learning and activity and quiz and so on. Then she, he explained uh, KMOOCs Insight and uh, KMOOCs in 2017 and the future plan. Finally, in the expert for Japan, uh, from Thailand, uh, national e-learning uh, named by EDTV, which means the e-distance learning TV. And it includes uh, global OER and MOOCs. Then they had a uh, two years project under the support of the Office of uh, Basic Education Commission. Then including to uh, 10 uh, initiative content partners and the portfolio and e-testing system and so on. So especially for introducing to the edX studio then including to the converting SCOM to edX and the step-based authoring and the drop, and drop tools and so on. To, uh, he explained the current status. Finally, uh, from the next session, uh, this includes to the first of all, uh, JMOOCs portal and platforms. This portal uh, has a single sign-on from the Google or Facebook. And he explained to the quality assurance through the course certification, which means uh, including the category one and the category two and the category three. Category one means uh, university level courses and uh, provided by universities. And uh, category two means uh, courses provided by a technical college and vocational schools. And finally, uh, category three means uh, special extension courses by university and courses and companies. Then he explained like this item. Next one is uh, GAKKO. The title is GAKKO, the Japan MOOCs, launched on the 3rd uh, February 2014. And uh, over uh, RANA is over 360,000 persons and include over the 180 courses. And he explained the uh, ratio of agenda or something ratio ages. Then he finally he explained the business side looking for the new market when the providing for the your e learning platforms. The next one is from Fujitsu introducing the Fujitsu MOOC platforms, PISDAM. Pistam is a produce from uh, Freedom is Wisdom. And uh, it includes hybrid and inter integrated platform, MOOC and Spokes, supporting both uh, Japanese and English. And they include peer assessment and uh, logging with uh, OpenID and Sibores uh, authentication. Then she explains the uh, course structure and, uh, for example, uh, available open courses like this basic series on the engineering introduction to information literacy and so on. Then 
that she explained by uh, some screenshot. My courses, a uh, list of chapters uh, like this. Then, next one is uh, from the Open University Japan platform. The architecture is a uh, Moodle base plus ebooks and um, Mozilla open badges. Uh, he explained the standard curriculum and the problem in the Open University platforms. Then, just he ex uh, introduced the IMS Caliper and uh, that's a new project of uh, IMSJS uh, JMOOC joint project. Finally, from the JMOOCs, uh, Pitch is a net running ink platform. They use by uh, 35 million person and uh, five over, over 5,000 courses. Then he introduced the company program and the company concept like this. Then he introduced the one example of a course, Japanese fashion history. Hitch is a uh, average of a runner is uh, 49 years old. Then just he, he insists of a reason for the including the, the high compression rate because uh, have a, because of two items. One is uh, learning design, which means uh, easy to understand concept and uh, class redesign and face-to-face -face lecture for e-learning. Then support center, which means a uh, special team and supporting students and admi administrators. Okay, that's it. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Soya Lee, and I'm, a, I'm honored to be a repertoire for the institutional level session. I'll give you a brief summary on the track three session, institutional level, organized by KMOOC we had this morning. The session was composed of one keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Jin Hyuk Lim. He's from Postec, and followed by four speakers, Professor Dr. Sung Yun Oh, uh, University of Science and Technology, from Korea, Professor Dr. Christina T. Ambar Pospi Tasari from Universities, uh, Universitas Terbuka, Indonesia, and Professor Dr. Vilas Ruans uh, from Mahido University, Thailand, and Mr. Masanobu Obinita uh, from Sofia University in Japan. Themes and concepts covered in the session for the institutional level were major developments and prospects for MOOCs at universities in Asia Pacific region. It was a great opportunity to look at the university strategy and policy towards MOOCs in a comparative perspective from professors' uh, point of view. The session aimed to draw the practical implications for further development of MOOCs at the university level in Asia Pacific region by bringing in and sharing the advanced practices of MOOCs at the university level in the region. This session looks at the current status of MOOCs, the, the obstacles university are facing currently in terms of MOOC development, operation, and promotion of MOOCs in their campuses and their efforts to overcome these obstacles. Current status of MOOCs in university is very positive. More and more students are interested in take, taking courses through MOOC and utilizing knowledge they learn from the MOOC. Universities are not only expanding number of MOOC courses they're offering, but they are, they are also increasing diversity of MOOC courses um, they're offering. Common challenges most institu institutions are facing right now are low complete completion rate and cost and management of MOOC. To tackle low completion rate, institutions are putting various kinds of efforts such as recognition of MOOC certification as regular credits mentioned by Professor Sung In Yo, Postec, uh, which is actually happening in Postec right now, uh, and making courses with English subtitles 
to draw global students mentioned by Dr. Mr. Masanobu Obunita from Sofia University and trying to offer more MOOCs that meet the needs of the society mentioned by Professor Dr. Krisnatik Ember Pas Paspitasari from University of Terbuka in Indonesia. For cost and manage of MOOC, we're still working on to find a way we can reduce the cost without sacrificing quality. Uh, however, it is important to us to remember good quality of MOOC mainly depends on learning content itself, not, not on exterior beauty aspect of the video. To maintain high quality of MOOC, it is important to incorporate quality assurance as Dr. Jim Young Lee mentioned in his, his presentation. Uh, what makes this session uh, productive is that this session covered institutional support to promote MOOC at institutions both for students and teachers. For students, USD in, in Korea initiated MOOC-based individualized remedy programs, as Dr. S uh, Sung In Oh mentioned in, in his presentation. For teachers, Dr. Vilas Wee Wong Se from Maido University made a, a really interesting point. He talked about an institutional support for teachers. He, men um, he mentioned about academic promotion support for teachers so they can use MOOCs as their research output for promotion. In this way, teachers can receive acknowledgement of their work and it will help teachers to focus more on MOOC. His statement emphasizes the importance of an institutional support, not only for students, but also for teachers in order, to, in order for us to achieve expected goals of MOOC initiative. The session was very productive and promising, promising because it allowed us to see MOOCs in different institutions are sharing one common goal, which is to provide quality co courses to students in order to promote global life for lifelong learning, even though they are currently on different tracks. Thank you very much. I'd like to wrap up with the policy session, which I hope is still fresh on your minds. Um, I thought it was a fantastic ending point, and uh, it really reminded us what this is all about. Uh, that we're all learners, that we're all students, and whether it's at policy level or course level, we're all students. Um, Professor Lim, I think, was, was casual, but his questions were profound and his points were spot on to the implications of policy. So I, I love how Professor uh, Lim presents because it, it, he's giving you insight without forcing it. <laughs> so it's coming across very naturally, and I think one question in particular really frames the policy discussion well. It's, how could MOOCs address the challenges of equity, quality, and efficiency? Asking us, what is the purpose of your MOOC, right? If you can answer that question at different levels, that could really be a driving force. Uh, so I want all of us to remember those three points, uh, if we can. Uh, quality, efficiency, and equity. Because what is the role of government if it's not about those three things? I, I think that's really important, and we were reminded of that, uh, the role of government to ensure equitable and inclusive quality education. Um, we heard that from JMOOC and KMOOC in different ways. Uh, they're all different models, but they teach us about the importance of reflecting on this question continuously, that this is not about one question that's asked once at the beginning of the process. It's asked continuously, and that's what I mean by we are all learners, right? There's a continuous development process to what we're talking about here today. Um, and I love President Key's point um, about that education in the context of Korea must be linked to social welfare, uh, links uh, MOOCs to lifelong learning and collaboration with the ministry. You start to see the contextualization of MOOCs, right? Linking MOOCs to the development and so well-being of, of the social, uh, social class, social welfare. Uh, Dr. Tapani mentioned the same. Digital Thailand. There's a vision here in Thailand that's taking shape. It's gaining momentum across the ministries and MOOCs, digital natives being a part of that, promoting lifelong learning. It has a place in the big plan and development in Thailand. And I think that's where we start to see the role of government in promoting equity, quality, uh, and efficiency. So I think Professor Yoshimi gave us the, the, the remaining step to say, where do we go from here? This becomes a, a consortium, and I, I think on behalf of UNESCO, I would congratulate uh, Thai MOOC, uh, J MOOC, and K MOOC for going first. It's not easy to kind of come out as a network and say, this is important to us. These questions um, around quality, efficiency, and equity in the context of MOOCs are important. So you've gone out first and said that these are questions that you want to link to Education 2030. 
You want to link these to the sustainable development goals. You want to link these to social welfare and the development of your country. And that's really what UNESCO wants, right? I mean, this is bringing this back to uh, quality education. So I think those three points are really important at different levels, of course. And I think Professor Yoshimi's point about uh, coming together again at those different levels could form working groups. Uh, Professor Liebing mentioned uh, meeting in Shenzhen, for example, as a next step to form this steering group at different levels and what those key questions are need to be answered as we go forward with this network. But I think it was a fantastic end and we're excited that this is all linking back to uh, us being learners together as we work forwards towards next steps towards quality education. Thank you. I'm happy to hear about a full reporter because uh, <clears throat> as I saw, I, I would love to start from the policy. That policy is like a, like a set up for our goal that we should to be, we should to do and how to be in the future. That's important. So that I'm so happy that our, our case of the move for East country or each community, we also set our policy already, right? Then you summarize. For the institutional <coughs> or the university or the organization, we also set many uh, <coughs> many steps of our institute level so that <coughs> <coughs> our platform, our portal is, is important for our MOOC platform. If we have no the platform we can put cannot put any cost any activity on that one for the program that's important again because it's like the <coughs> it's like the most important thing that can communicate to the learner that professor Parinya, uh report for the CPO for the content for the uh, pedagogy and assessment and learning yeah. media that's all like the jigsaw that we merge together for the four reporter that you summarize. Wow, it's wonderful. That I am so happy to hear that. Well, I think that for reporter, is it possible for the audience? Would you love to join the reporter to summarize or any comment or any suggestion? I think that they also compete. Both of them, the reporter complete already. So that this time, I think that this is time that we also spend the whole day, such a long, long day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for my feeling that this is perfect conference that we also align, that we also share knowledge, expertise for the today already. This time that we are this time, I think that we should to report where the website that Michael also announced already. We can archive everything because this is a MOOC. This is a digital archive. We can access anytime, anywhere when we back to our home. So that MOOC is like an important topic. Is is our. <coughs> class is our classroom that we can access everywhere so that for the full reporter summarize the full topic this is important for our MOOC to enhance our learning in this era so that I think that this time to say no matter anything we have to <coughs> do again for our MOOC and also, I think that this time we'll say, we'll say thank you for everyone that for your attention and hope you return home safe and sound. See you again on next, the second Asia Pacific MOOC Stakeholder Summit in Seoul, Korea. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, as she said, see you again in Korea. So, will you buy ticket for all of us? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. On behalf of the host, um, Jemuk, Kemuk, 
Thai Book and also UNESCO, we thank everyone who put your heart into this event, who participate into this event, and we hope we learn a lot from this event together. And don't forget, all the video recording of our session will be available on the website, so you can come back, and all the presentation files as well in PDF format, you can go and download by yourself, plus one book from UNESCO and one book from uh, Nile. So thank you very much. Have a good trip home. Thank you. Goodbye.